You find yourself in familiar territory. That something feels off. Roll for investigation. With that check, you're confident this is the video you're looking for. Let's go. What's up, guys? If you want to learn how to make a D&D &D or TTRPG overlay for your Twitch streams or your recordings, this is the video for you. We're going to be doing just that in Canva right now. Does your stream need healing? You've come to the right place. My name is Dr. Heels and I am your content cleric. Around here we make videos just like this to help you level up your stream on a budget. So let's go ahead and get started. We First thing we're gonna do is open up canva.com. If you don't already have an account, go ahead and set up one. If you do not have a pro account, you may need one in today's video. You may not, but you may. Don't worry, you can get one with my 30 day free trial down in the description. It's there, always available for you. But now that we're in Canva, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new New document. We're gonna do custom size. We just want it to be 1920 by 1080 or whatever size you stream in. If you stream in 720, then make it at 720. If you stream in 4K, make it at 4K, right? Also, you'll notice Canva has gotten a facelift. Looks very, very nice. Let's go and go custom size. Again, I'm just gonna go to my recent, but if, well, we'll go 1920 by 1080, just like that. Create new size, create new design, whatever it says. Okay. So you can completely start from scratch if you want to, but I like to use, you know, other layouts. And so one of the best places I've found to find overlays is actually on Etsy. Now we're not gonna be copying these, the, the overlay or the style, but I love the layouts that they use. So we're gonna do D and D overlay, which by the way, guys, I know I'm really big on making your own overlays, but if you want to go and support some amazing artists, buying your overlays and Twitch things on, on Etsy is, is a really, really cool way to do it. So right here, I thought this one was really good right here, right? We have the DM here in the middle with the map, and then we have, you know, six players. You could do two players, whatever you need. Obviously, I mean, two on each side, so you have four players. A lot of this is going to be based on how many players you have or how many people are going to be playing. Let's see. This one is excellent. Now, I will say, I love this style. This is not a style like, I don't know, maybe I could do this, but a lot of this is more like hand-drawn type stuff. I, like I've seen different ones like this, and that is just not my, not within my capabilities. But I like this layout. I like the DM camera over here on the top left. We have the player cameras at the bottom. We have a map, and then we have like, you know, another little window for, you know, whatever we want to put there. So. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one as my inspiration. And if you guys like this, this is Design with Zach over on Etsy. You're welcome to hit him up. It looks like he probably makes this custom for 100 bucks, which is not bad at all. I may have to hit him up for my future overlays because I really like that style. And I don't think that is within my wheelhouse. I'm much more of a branding guy. But OK, so first thing we do, we're going to just size it, and make it our full screen. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go and lock it just like that. That way I can click, drag, move stuff around and I'm not constantly moving it. Now, my whole goal right now is to kind of figure out the inspiration, like how I want to make it. So I now have my layout, but what do I actually want it to look like? And what I'm going to do here just for just for this, and one of the things that helps me is I like to kind of start with a Canva template. I think Canva templates are amazing. And so we're going to type, you know, D&D. Let's see if anything comes up for D&D. These two because there's stuff I've already been working on. Ignore those. Looks like we're getting a lot of like D letter logos. Let's try dragon, right? Dragons, very stereotypical to D and D. Ooh, this looks cool. And so what I'm looking at, by the way, just to, just so it's clear, I'm looking at the background. I'm looking at the elements that are in the design. What of that could I use in my overlay? Like this one over here with the like the shadowy background and the dragon in the back. Like that's that one's really cool, right? Really neat image. Let's see. I'm also looking for elements that, that we can draw in, just different things that I can use. This one's actually like a book cover, but I could see using it in some cool ways or, or like this one, right? All right, let's go away from dragon. Let's go dungeon. Yeah, okay. So this is a little more of what I'm looking for. See this one right here? I love this background, this green background. You kind of have these elements in the back. You have these characters that we could always pull out. We already have some text. We have a color palette. Um, all these things are excellent. But look, as we click on this one, Canva is going to give us some other recommendations. And so some of these other ones are looking really, really good too. Like this one right here, for instance, I could use these backgrounds. I could bring in these flowers. Let's say, you know, I'm running more of a campaign that they, that kind of fits into, right? One of the things we want to think about is what kind of campaign we're running, what fits, what art style fits, right? That one's pretty good. What about this one? Oh, let's go with the second one. Yeah, that's solid. I like that a lot. 
Okay, and so all I'm looking at again is I'm as I'm clicking through, I'm looking at different elements that I can use. Because the cool thing in Canva is you can copy and paste things from one project to the other. And so as I you know start to figure out what I want to use, which I think I'm just gonna stick with this first one. I really liked it, so I'm just gonna hit customize this template. But you can spend plenty of time looking, trying to see. You can try other other keywords like adventure, right? You know, try different keywords and you can find some different elements to pull out. We could try like medieval. Okay, so yeah, we can go like medieval and we're gonna see, you know, we're getting plenty of recommendations, different things that we could pull still from, right? This one's pretty cool. I like this character too. There's a whole set of these like adventurers that are like with, uh, you know, disabilities, but they're kind of like made to for, for fantasy. It's awesome. Okay, but we'll stick with this one right here that we opened up. And yeah, so really my goal is to, to see what I want to use. Like I kind of like this split here. You see how you have one side has this like white-ish background and the other side has you know, this background. I'm um, also like the dragon shadow. So anyway, all that I'm just, I'm keeping in mind as I start to design. All right, so I'm gonna jump back over here and for now, I'm gonna go ahead and block out my spaces where I need a camera. So now we're gonna go ahead, if you want this out of your way, you just click this little X. I'm still getting used to the new layout of everything as well. I'm gonna hit elements and I'm going to put a square in there. And so I'm just very roughly placing this and I know that I will move them based on how I want everything as well because I do want even spacing and they have elements in their design that I'm not gonna be using. And so I'm just holding down alt and shift dragging so it stays on this horizontal line here, just like that. You see it's popping that 57, so I have equal spacing on both sides. And I can drag this down to fit this area. Um, I do want, I'm just gonna put this here for me for just right now. I do want a second area here that has like my game logo. My current campaign I'm running is called the everlasting unveiled and so i may have like my my logo there or something like that and I'm just i'm just let's resize that last camera like this the player ones are a little smaller i don't like i like everything to be kind of what's the word even i don't know and then do like that we're going to create one for only four four players because that's what i have and so i'm just trying to make sure my spacing is somewhat even I really want it to like come to the edges of this, but that's not gonna be even spacing. So we'll see. We will select all of these like this and we can go right here into position and we can go tidy up and it, it evens out my spacing. So there we go. We could also make these cameras a little bit larger since we don't have the same stuff going on that they do, just like that. All right, so now we're getting the basic layouts made. So let's actually start doing the design. First thing I think I think we want to do is I'm just going to go and delete this in the background now. I've got I've used it for the layout. That's what I wanted off of it. We're going to get rid of it. All right, so now we're looking at everything a little bit more clear. So now as I'm looking at it, I think I want to extend these down to close this gap just a little bit more and try to keep all my spacing you know, somewhat even. So that feels pretty good to me, right? Now let's go ahead. We're going to grab this background color. So we're going to click here right here and copy that background color I'm just gonna click the background little white box and paste it in there okay all right we got that so now I want to I'm actually just going to delete these guys for now to get it kind of out of my way um, I will come back and take different pieces but now I'm just gonna copy everything else that's kind of here and bring it over to our design uh, position and send to back there we go and just like that, we already have some pretty cool stuff happening. I want, I really want this dragon like head kind of, I don't know, in, in somewhere a bit more visible, uh, something recognizable, if you, you know, kind of, which might be difficult. We'll go with something like that. I think that has a pretty cool feel to it. Now we're already getting close to our design. Now what we want to do is we actually want to kind of dress up these boxes because, you know, just having a regular box there is probably not really going to do the trick. And I will warn, we're planning to use a chroma key on this. And so this green I'm using in the background may or may not work. We may have to play with the green just a little bit. Uh, but we'll get to that later on. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna type in um, a frame. And obviously these frames are gonna come up. Those are not what we want. We wanna go under graphics. I don't know if maybe that's the right word, more of like a game frame. Let's see what comes up if we type in that. Um, ooh, some really cool stuff. Look at that, that'd be a sweet new video coming up already. That's a new ca new cam border right there. All right, let's see. Let's see what we can find. Uh, fantasy cam border. But just a little heads up there. They are very cool, but they don't necessarily fit. 
Now this one's really cool and I could see using it, you know, shrinking it down a little bit and using it here or maybe using it here as, you know, my logo goes in there that talks about the campaign, right? So maybe I have a logo in there that says the everlasting unveiled. These aren't quite what I'm looking for for the frame. So let's keep looking. This actually feels pretty good. 90 degrees. It's very large is my my only drawback with it is it's it's a bit larger than I want to use. Let's see if we could add a filter to it and make it sort of a gold color. Okay, so now we're going to start from start back right at the beginning. I'm going to crop off the bottom here just like this. Alt drag it over, crop the end off of this one just like that. Drag it over, control D, and then I want to add in the right side of this one. Try not to go too far that it makes it bigger. Yeah, that actually looks really, really good. So now we're going to alt drag this one down and I need to add in more on the bottom and crop off the top just like that. And I'm just using it again as elements to build out, I, uh, build out my frame. And the cool thing about this is I can do this. We're seeing we're getting, it's not lining up as perfect here. So let's see if we can flip this one. I'll flip this one, drop off the top, add back in the bottom. Right, something like that. We're getting there. I, I'm not loving the blending for some reason right here. I think it's because this one is a little bit larger. I'm gonna zoom in, get real close like that. That, not perfect, but feeling a lot better, I think. And so essentially we're just gonna build out these these frames around everything. I'm just gonna see if I can copy and paste these over. For alt drag and then do a flip horizontal, just kidding, vertical, there we go. But you can kind of see how we're piecing this all together. We're just gonna drag this one down. Zoom in. Don't worry, we will not go through all of these, all of the camera frames on the, on the video. For the sake of time, we won't do this on every single one, but you can see how you could very easily go through and make out a frame that matches all of yours, right? I could actually maybe just use elements of this one. Let's see. And just, you know, now that I have this, these all cut up, I think within just a few minutes, I'm not going to make that as pretty, but let's, let's jump to the end. And there we go. Through the magic of editing, it looks like it was done instantly. It wasn't. You don't know that I almost quit this channel three times in the process. But here we are. We're mostly the end. Now, we're going to notice that it's not quite picture perfect. Do you see these little corners that are down here? We don't like those. We're going to make those a little bit smaller, and hopefully we can fit it inside without having to do some funky editing. So I'm just going to hold down Alt to size all my the square like that, I think is pretty good. And then I can hold here and hold down Alt to do both sides. We're going to do that on all of our squares. Just in case you can't tell what I'm doing, I am erasing, um, I'm not erasing, erasing is the wrong word. I'm, you see how you can see the blue square right on the other side? I'm just making the inside square smaller. And so one thing that if you can't get to it for some reason, like I can't on this one, you may have to click this and move it to the back and then you can click on your blue square and size it down just like that. I'll move the dragon to the back. Then it should let me grab a hold of this one and I'll move it to the front. There we go. Just like that, we fixed it. Now, one thing we want to do before we go and, you know, adjust all these different things and uh, then have to click and get all the way back to that box is one thing I want to do with that box is I want to make the box a bright, bright green. Or what I'm going to try to do in this video is I'm going to try to make this a bright, bright blue so that I can use my green background because we're going to use a chroma key to remove the background from these. So I'm going to set this as a bright, bright blue, something that contrasts greatly with uh, basically everything else. And so now that I've changed it, I can hit change all, and it's gonna change all of those colors to that bright blue. Now, for this one, I don't actually need it. Oh, just kidding. I need this. I'm gonna delete that box because I want to put my logo in here. But before I do that, I wanna see if I can make this match the colors of this kind of gold that I have going all around. So I'm gonna hit edit, hit see all on filters. See if I can find something that fits a little closer. Okay, so that's a possibility. I'm gonna actually do none to the filters real quick. And we're gonna go to a duo tone. This may not get us there, but I'm going to try it. I'm gonna hit custom. I'm gonna set my highlights as the brighter parts of these. So like this, and then I'm gonna hit my shadows as the darker spots like that. Uh, you can see it's definitely getting closer. I want my highlights, I think a little bit brighter. 
and we're just gonna toy with it just a little bit. I feel like that's pretty good. That's pretty, it's close, right? All right, now I need a logo that will, you know, go with my brand or go with my campaign. So let's go over and why don't we just use Canva again? Now we could dive in here and we could maybe use something like the text that they used here and, you know, paste it in there. Obviously make it much smaller. Everlasting Unveiled is my campaign name. Um, we're gonna adjust that sizing just a little bit. Just the spacing. Why are you only adjusting on one line? Click off, click back on. That's better. Feels comfortable. You know, then we could throw that in there and you know, we're, we're kind of onto something. But let's say that we're in Canva and you know what, we're, we're a designer, we wanna design stuff. So we're gonna click home and we want to make a logo. Now, one thing I wanna remember is the size of logo that I want to make. So we're gonna go fantasy logo. Okay. Kind of like this font. All I'm looking at right now is the font, I'll be honest. I like the font. I'm gonna delete the book immediately. If you wanted to use that, you can. But I'm basically using this as a hack to find a good font. Put this here for the word the everlasting unveiled, right? And so now, you know, I have some sort of logo. I can copy and paste it over. Control C, delete that out. Control V, paste that in. Obviously the coloring doesn't quite work. So what I can do here is go under effects. I can go, there's a splice effect that's been done with this, this color. I want to get rid of that color and change it to something that matches my design, like that green, which I think worked very well. I also want to kind of size these words up just a little bit more so that they're easier to read. Click on this one. What's the size of this one? 37.9, we'll just match those. There we go. And I would call this done. So let's go ahead, export it out and put it into OBS and see how that goes. So we're gonna hit share. We're gonna hit download. You can download it however you want. I will download it as a PNG. Um, I can't do transparent because you know I have these big blue boxes. I need the chroma key out. And then we're just gonna hit download. While that's downloading, let's open up uh, my extra OBS, my tutorial version. Ignore this. Let's go ahead and create a new scene and we will say D&D overlay or whatever TTRPG you play. One thing I would love to know, if you play a TTRPG, what do you play? Uh, what game do you play? So I'm going to use the virtual camera from my recording OBS as the media source, as the video capture here. Do the OBS virtual camera. Hey, I know that guy. We will put ourselves rightfully so in the DM spot. Now let's see if our image has finished downloading. It indeed has. So let's go ahead and bring in a image or whatever it named it. Name it something that you can you actually recognize. But for me, I'm just moving forward because this is already taking longer than I expected. All right, there we go. We have it in OBS. Wait, what we're gonna do is click on image here. We're gonna go to filters. We will hit the plus button and we will add a chroma key filter. And it did nothing, which is not what we want. We wanted to do something. So we're gonna hit where it says green and we're gonna hit blue. Ah, that did weird. That cut out a lot more than we wanted. So let's see what we can do here. We're gonna adjust our similarity. Something like this until all our stuff is back. Just like that. We're gonna hit close and our chroma key is done. I will size me correctly so in the DM spot. Little trick here, I'm about to teach you. I'm gonna drag this out. See how this is coming over here and I don't want it. If you hold down alt on your keyboard and move this over, it actually crops it. And there we go. Just like that, we have a D&D overlay. You can put all of your stuff in here. And if you ever wanna watch me run my TTRPG, we actually have a D&D 5E campaign that runs on Friday nights from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Central Standard Time over at twitch.tv slash Dr. Heels. Make sure you come on over. I appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.